Today, we are looking at the UK's longest serving criminals who are still alive serving their deserved time in prison. Luckily, these prisoners will never be free to walk the streets again. 1. Robert Maudsley is known as Britain's most dangerous prisoner. In 1974, Robert picked up John Farrell, strangled and murdered him. Robert handed himself in to the police and said he needed psychiatric help. He was found unfit to stand trial and was sent to Broadmoor Hospital. By 1977 in Broadmoor Hospital, Robert killed fellow patient David Francis. He was convicted of manslaughter and he was sent from the psychiatric hospital to Wakefield Prison. Robert wasn't happy and made it clear he wanted to go back to Broadmoor. In 1978 in Wakefield Prison, Robert killed two other inmates, Solney Darwood and William Roberts. Robert was later sentenced to life imprisonment with a recommendation that he is never to be released. While at Wakefield Prison, Robert is in solitary confinement in a two-unit cell that was built in the basement of the prison just for him as he is so violent. When he comes out of the cell, there has to be four officers. Robert has spent over 40 years in solitary confinement. Based on his three counts of murder and one count of manslaughter, he will never be released. He is still at Wakefield Prison and is 70 years old. 2. Arthur Hutchinson Triple murderer Arthur Hutchinson first spent five years in prison for the attempted murder of his stepbrother. In 1983, Hutchinson escaped police custody while he was being held for a violent crime and went on the run for three and a half weeks using different disguises. While on the run, Arthur broke into the home of Basil and Avril Leitner and their 28-year-old son, Richard. He broke in through a patio window. It was easy for him to break in as there was a marquee still in the garden as they had just hosted their daughter's wedding reception over the weekend. Once in, he stabbed to death Avril, Basil and Richard and then assaulted their daughter. He was eventually caught in a farm in Hartlepool. He went on trial on September the 11th, 1984 and said Sunday Mirror reporter Mike Barron was guilty of the murders. After a four hour deliberation, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a recommended minimum term of 18 years, which could have seen him released from prison in 2002 in the event that the parole board decided he was no longer a risk. After the conviction, the Home Secretary issued Hutchinson with a whole life tariff. He is still serving his sentence and is 82 years old. 3. Jeremy Bamber On the 7th of August 1985, Jeremy rang the police around 3.30am saying he heard shots fired. He told the police his sister Sheila, who had schizophrenia, had gone berserk with his rifle. When police entered White House Farm, Jeremy's sister Sheila was found dead on the floor of her parents' bedroom with a rifle up against her throat. His mum and dad were found in the same room. Sheila's six-year-old twin sons, Nicholas and Daniel, were found in their beds in another upstairs room, while Jeremy was in the kitchen downstairs. The family had been shot a total of 25 times. Because of Sheila's mental health history, the police assumed that she had murdered her family and then herself. But further on into the investigation, it became clear that Jeremy had in fact committed the murders to get the family's money. Jeremy was charged with the murder. The jury found that he placed his rifle in his sister Sheila's hands. As she had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, it would make the scene appear to be a murder-suicide. He would then get all of the family's money. Jeremy is serving life imprisonment with a whole life tariff, meaning that he has no possibility of parole. He has appealed his convictions plenty of times with no luck. While in Wakefield Prison, he has taken up lots of activities and studies, keeping himself away from trouble within prison. The extended family believe he is guilty of the murders. He is one of Britain's longest serving prisoners. He is 62 years old. 4. Rose West British serial killer Rose West, along with her serial killer husband, Fred West, murdered at least 10 girls. 
Rose and Fred met in 1969 and soon got married, taking on Fred's two daughters from his previous marriage and going on to have their own. Rose was an abusive mother and her first murder was her stepdaughter Charmaine. She told everyone that Charmaine had gone back to live with her mother. Catherine West, the first wife of Fred West, sought out Fred and Rose's address to demand to see her two daughters. This was the last time she was seen as Fred had murdered his ex-wife. Rose and Fred West relocated to 25 Cromwell Street. Rose had given birth to eight children, some Fred's and some for her prostitution, but Fred took them on as his own. All suffered abuse from the hands of Rose and Fred West. And between 1972 and 1992, the West children were admitted to the casualty units of local hospitals 31 times. The injuries were explained as accidents and never reported to social services. When Fred was accused of R and his own daughter, an investigation finally happened. This blew up the case. The police found bones buried in their garden. Fred West is known to have committed at least 12 murders, the majority with his wife, Rose. All the victims were young women, and there are a lot more presumed victims of the serial killer couple. These are the victims that were named and linked. Anna McFall, 18 years old, was killed by Fred. She was the nanny to his first two children with his ex-wife. Charmaine West, 8 years old, Fred's stepdaughter, believed to have been killed by her mum, Rose West. Rena Costella, 27 years old, Fred's first wife, killed by Fred presumably for asking where their two daughters were. Linda Goff, aged 19. Carol Ann Cooper, aged 15. Lucy Partington, aged 21. Fariz Sagentla, aged 21. Shirley Hubbard, age 15. Anita Mott, aged 18. Shirley Robinson, aged 18, was killed and also pregnant with Fred's child. Alison Chambers, aged 16. Heather West, 16 years old, the eldest daughter of Fred and Rose West. While on remand, on January 1st, 1995, Fred ended his own life. On the 21st and 22nd of November 1995, the jury returned guilty verdicts for all murders to Rose West. It was decided she would spend at least 25 years in prison, but in July 1997, Home Secretary Jack Straw subjected Rose to a whole life tariff. Rose West appealed this as before dying, Fred West admitted to 30 murders and she said that he did them single-handedly. Rose is 69 years old and located in Newhall Jail in Wakefield, West Yorkshire, still serving her life sentence. 5. Thomas Mayer Thomas was a 53-year-old unemployed gardener born in Scotland. He suffered with some mental health problems and in June 2016, Labour MP Jo Cox was on her way to meet constituents at a routine surgery in Burstall, West Yorkshire when Thomas shot her twice in the head and once in the chest with a modified hunting rifle. He then stabbed her 15 times just outside a library on Market Street. Unfortunately, Joe died shortly after the attack. Retired mines rescuer Bernard Carter Kenny, aged 77, was also stabbed when coming to Cox's aid. He was awarded the George Medal for his bravery. Another witness followed Thomas and identified him to the police. Joe Cox's death was the first killing of a sitting British MP since Eastbourne MP Ian Goh, who was killed by the Provisional Irish Republican Army in 1990. Thomas had mental health issues, but soon it was realised that Joe Cox was targeted because he believed individuals of liberal and left-wing political viewpoints and the mainstream media were the cause of the world's problems. 
Thomas had links to American and British far-right groups, and when the police searched his home, he had books of this nature too, as well as internet searches of how to make a bomb. On the 18th of June 2016, he was asked to confirm his name to the courts. Thomas said, My name is Death to Traitors, Freedom for Britain. His trial began on the 14th of November 2016 and by the 23rd of November 2016 the jury took about 90 minutes to convict Thomas of Cox's murder, bodily harm against Bernard Carter Kenny, possession of a firearm with intent and possession of a dagger. The same day Thomas was sentenced to life imprisonment. 60 year old Thomas is still in prison and will be for the rest of his life. 6. Wayne Cousins on March 3rd, 2021, Sarah Everard was kidnapped as she was walking home from a friend's house. She was stopped by an off-duty police officer, Wayne Cousins. He identified himself as a police officer and it's believed he falsely arrested her due to breaking COVID rules. He handcuffed her, put her in his car and then drove to Dover where he murdered Sarah. On March 9th, 2021, Cousins was arrested in Kent first on suspicion of Sarah's kidnapping and later on suspicion of her murder. Sarah's remains were discovered in Woodland near Ashford, Kent on 10th of March. Following their identifications, Wayne was charged with her kidnapping and her murder. Wayne Cousins pled guilty and accepted responsibility of Sarah's death. On the 30th of September, Cousins was sentenced to life imprisonment with a tariff of a whole life order. Following his sentence, in November 2022, two of Cousins' colleagues, PC Jonathan Coven and former PC Joel Borders, were jailed for multiple counts of sending grossly offensive messages on a public communications network. Coben and Borders were part of a WhatsApp group chat with Cousins and another officer where they sent racist, homophobic, misogynistic and ableist messages. This has led in recent years into a lot of other investigations to the Met Police and their conduct with other cases and other victims. 50 year old Wayne Cousins serves his whole life sentence in Her Majesty's Prison, Franklin, and will never be released. 7. Damien Bendel. On September 19th, 2021, police were called to a home in Sheffield. When they arrived at the scene, they found Bendel outside with self-inflicted stab wounds on his chest and stomach from a bread knife. Bendel said to the officers that he'll be going to prison again, and when asked what he had done, he calmly responded with, I've murdered four people. The officers entered the house and found the remains of three children and one adult. The victims were named as Lacey Bennett, aged 11, and John Paul Bennett, aged 13. Their mother, Terry Harris, aged 35, and Lacey's friend, Connie Jen, aged 11. The two siblings and the mother lived at the property while Jen was staying at the property for a sleepover. Terry, one of the victims, was Bendel's girlfriend, and she was pregnant with his child. It then came to light his previous allegations of domestic abuse and his previous convictions. His convictions were a robbery in 2010, which left a victim unconscious, an attempted robbery in 2015 where he used a knife, and attacking three prison officers in 2016, which left one need in surgery and months of physical rehabilitation. At the time of these murders, he was actually on probation for an arson attack. Considering his violent past and then these murders, it was seen as a failing by probation because he should have been in prison. Damien was sentenced to a whole life order and will die behind the bars. He is serving his time at Wakefield Prison. Thanks for watching. Part 2 will be coming out shortly. Until next time.